Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we're going to look at breadth first search in order to traverse a graph which is given to us. Now, a graph basically contains a bunch of nodes, and uh, the nodes are connected to each other with routes. Now, the routes can be unidirectional or bidirectional, uh, depending on what kind of graph it is. Um, now, that will be depicted in the adjacency matrix which we will uh, develop through the graph. Let's get back to the breadth first search. The breadth first, the breadth first search is an algorithm which uh, uses a queue. Okay, it uses a queue in order to store visited nodes and then you know go through all the nodes by storing them and like by queuing them up and then dequeuing them. Uh, similarly, there is another algorithm called the depth first search, which is basically a cousin of the breadth first search. And that algorithm uses a stack instead of a queue. We'll get to that algorithm as well in the next video. But for now, let's go to how the breadth first search works. Now, let's just imagine this kind of a graph. Now, in this graph, we have the nodes 0, 1, 2, and 3. In the node 0, uh, we have a route from 0 to 2 and from 0 to 1. Then we have a route from 2 to 0 and 2 to 3. Then we have a route from 1 to 2. And this can all be given by an adjacency matrix, which we will see soon. But for now, let's just say we start with 0. Now, in this, we are using a queue. So how will this work? We take 0 and put it in the queue. The next step is basically, the, so the first step, obviously, is to take the node, which we are currently at, and put it in the queue. The next step, basically, is to remove that element. Or, you know, in a queue, it's like first in, first out so if you're in first you come out first so you put zero in that's obviously the only element so there's no ed other element to compare it with so you just take this put a zero in and take it out or you know dequeue it so once you dequeue it you go at node zero and check which nodes it has routes to so zero has routes to two and zero has route to one so basically you take Arbitrarily, you check which element you need to search for, either it's zero, either it's one or two, and put it in the order of your choosing. So it's arbitrary. You can choose either zero, uh, one, or two. So what did I do over here? I dequeued zero. I checked what routes are available from zero to the other nodes, and I found that there's a route from zero to one and a route from zero to two. So arbitrarily, I chose one to be initially put in, and then I chose two to be put in. So I put in one and two, and you know it's a queue. So you go one at the bottom and then two. You can even imagine this to be you know like a horizontal queue, but you know I tend to visualize this as a vertical thing, which goes from top to bottom. So yeah, that's how it is. Sorry. So the next step will obviously be after putting it in the queue, we dequeue the first element we put in. So we dequeued one. So once we dequeue one, we check which routes are available from one. So from one, there's only one route available, which is to two. And two is already in the in the queue, so we don't need to put it again inside the queue, okay? Next, we take out the two, we dequeue two, and we check what routes are available from two. And from two, only the route three is available. And you put it three inside the queue, and you check. Okay, that's about it. So basically, you print zero. And also remember, whenever you dequeue something, you print it. So basically, I dequeued zero initially, then I dequeued one, then I dequeued two, and I'm, I'm printing them over here. You'll see in the program where I print them. So I have three over here, and I put that in after two, right? So three has a self loop over here, right? This is a self loop. All the poorly drawn, it is a self loop. So um, I'm going to dequeue three, and now I'm going to self loop to three. But three is already visited. See, whenever we print something, we know that it is visited. That's why we print it. So 3 is already visited, so I don't need to go again. This is how you avoid self-loop, by a visited array. We have an array which checks whether the, uh, the node is visited or not. And if it is visited, we do not put it back into the queue, or we do not print it. And um, that's how, basically, uh, BFS works. And it's really simple. Even the code is really simple. So let's just go over there and check it out. So even if you didn't understand this, I think looking at the code, you probably will. Now, I'll also show you what the adjacency matrix looks like in it. So let's just go over there now. So here we have the code, and in the code you can see there is um, 
this is the adjacency matrix. So basically, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 0, 1, 2, 3. So this basically means that is there a route from 0 to 0? But no, there is not. If you check the graph, there isn't actually. Is there a route from. Um, oh, wait. Damn it. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Is there a route from 3 to 3? Well, there is because it has a self loop, right? Is there a route from node 2 to 2? No, it's not. There is no self loop. So th this is basically how the adjacency matrix works. You check whether there's a route from 0 to 1 or 0 to 2. And if you check the graph, there are actually routes from 0 to 1 and 0 to 2. So enough about that. That is how this actually works. This is the, the adjacency matrix on which we are building this entire program. So here is the matrix. Now this is the matrix from here to here. I copied this and I pasted it in the form of a bidimensional bi array. So in Python, this is Python basically. Uh, so in Python, what to declare a bidimensional array, we have the first array, which is the first row, the second row, the third row, and the fourth row separated by commas and enclosed in uh, brace brackets, I think they're called. Yeah, brace brackets. And I also have a visited array. The visit array basically takes care of nodes which are visited. So if you visit a node, you check whether it is visited or not. And if it is visited, you don't need to put it in the queue again because there is no need, essentially. Um, next, um, add the start node to the queue. So what I did initially is we start from zero, right? So I took the node zero and I put it in the queue because we're going to start from there. If you're going to start from two, you take two and you put it in the node, uh, sorry, the queue. Similarly, as zero is already in the queue, I don't need to visit it again, ever again. So I'm just gonna say visited of zero equal to one. So basically this value will be turned to one, I mean, in the program. I'm not gonna do it manually, obviously. And how do you dequeue? In Python, there is a function pop of zero. So zero basically pops the first element you inserted. So if I inserted zero initially, or one initially into, oh uh, sorry, zero initially into queue, this will pop the first element. So this is like a hack which I made for, you know, for depicting a queue. If you want to make a stack, you remove this. And this is a stack. Although you have to change the name. I mean, you don't have to, but you could for better reading. Um, so basically, I pop the zeroth element. Okay, I pop the zeroth element, which means I take it out and I leave the array by itself without the first element. And so the first element is now the second element, which is, which is basically the first index. I mean, you know, because arrays start from zero. Okay, let's not get in deep into that right now. But yeah, node is basically going to be equal to zero now. So if node is zero, basically I'm starting with the zeroth node. So all this ha is happening, and why? You understand because I to I just told you in the graph what why this is happening. So next you have this whole true. Now I used a while true over here, but you can also use a while um, while queue is empty. So while queue is not empty. So if queue is empty. You can just pop it out. I mean, you can break. But here I did it explicitly so so that it's more understandable. When the queue is empty, break. Okay. But let's just go to the for loop now. The for loop says that for x in range of zero to len of visited. Now len of visited is basically four, the length of the visited array. Okay. The length of the visited array is what one zero one two three. So that is four um, elements. So zero to four. So we'll go from zero one two and three. So if matrix of node Node, node right now is zero, right? Because we're starting from the zeroth, zeroth node. So zero comma zero, initially x is zero, equal to one. Well, yes, zero comma zero is one right now. Matrix of zero comma zero is one. Is it? Well, no, matrix of zero comma zero is zero. But is visited of x zero? Visited of zero is not zero. Visited of zero is one. So this cannot be true. So it will, you know, in the same manner, it will go again and again. It will check whether there is a route which exists and we'll check whether the node to which the route exists is you know visited or not i mean the node is visited or not so these two operations will happen um, one after the other and check whether you know and basically means uh, both of them should be true and if both of them are true then the visited of x will be one and the q element will be appended as we saw earlier if there's a route from zero to two and zero to one if one and two are not visited, then only you will put them into the queue. Similarly, this is what you do over here. And then it's basically just a for loop which executes one after the other. And then when the queue is empty, break. But if the queue is not empty, you dequeue the first element. 
Okay, so basically, if you DQ zero initially, you will have a uh, two and three, sorry, one and two, which are in the queue. You DQ one, and then you check if it has any neighbors from here again, and then you DQ two, check whether it has any neighbors and are not visited from here, and then you do the same thing over and over and over again. So if I run this, oh yes, save it, and you can see zero, one, two, three, and that's. A BFS for you guys and it's very simple uh, the applications can be if you want to search for something uh, in the array in, in the graph or you want to traverse a tree you want to traverse a graph you want to go from one place to another you can even use this for location based tracking uh, if you want to find the location from one place to another but it, this is kind of a primitive method because it's not very smart as you can see it's ju it just text checks for two conditions it checks whether uh, there is a root which exists and checks whether that node is visited or not. So it's a very primitive method to do something, but you can still use it. I would suggest not using it for uh, location-based tracking, uh, you know, finding locations from one place to another. Uh, but yeah, it could be used, although it, 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 it's kind of a greedy algorithm. So yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. This is uh, this is a video I made after a long time. So uh, I'm trying to get back into the groove. Um, so thanks for watching if you like this video subscribe and share with your friends and python is awesome